Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Mojito's Gaming Bar, a show about bad games, good games, old games, new games, console games, PC games, you get the idea. So for episode 1 I choose Occupy White Walls and where do I start with this game? Oh I know exactly where to start. This game is free. It's entirely free to play, there's no upfront cost, no monthly subscription, no hidden fees, no microtransactions, nothing. I feel that this is important to point out because this game is also something else, early access. Now I'm usually against early access for obvious reasons, but if the game is free to play, then I'm okay with it. I've been hearing about this game since the end of 2018, and I gotta say the game makers don't do a very good job of communicating about it in my opinion, because I found out late, very late, that it was free. I saw an ad on Facebook recently about this game, and I left a comment that said this game looks really cool, but I'm gonna wait because I really don't want to play anything that is in early access. And the CM replied to me in the comments asking why? Uh, and I said, because I don't want to pay to be a beta tester. And the CM said, oh, pay? You, you, there's nothing to pay. The game is free. Entirely free. And so I was like, oh, shit. I'll try it then. I checked while doing research for this review and less than 10% of early access games on Steam are free to play. So yeah, that feels important to point out. And to explain what is this game about, well, it's actually not complicated, it's a pretty simple concept. Basically, you gotta imagine something in between Minecraft creative mode and The Sims, but the whole point of the game is to build and visit art galleries. You build art galleries, you visit other people's art galleries, that's the game. That's kind of a sandbox game, in a way, because there's not really any missions or levels or anything like this. But it is an MMO. The galleries that you are going to visit in the game are made by other players like you. And hopefully they are going to visit your gallery as well. There isn't one gigantic map like in most MMOs, so to go from one gallery to the other, you gotta use the teleportation menu. It's in three parts. The first is called My, it's got your galleries and your favorite galleries that you can add when you visit them. Then there is List. List is a list of active galleries. You can search galleries by name, by username of the person who created it. And then there's Featured. Featured as some of the featured galleries that were picked by the devs. One of them is called Plaza, it's very important and I will talk about it later in the video. You hit the teleport button and you get to this screen. Now originally I was gonna rant about how long that took, but then I timed it and it's on average about 30 seconds. I have no patience. There are two main mechanics and at the beginning of the game they are intertwined because this is not a pure sandbox game, it has RPG elements. Basically, the two main mechanics are building your galleries and buying artworks. And they are intertwined because at the beginning you only have a small selection of materials to build your gallery with. To get more styles of walls and floors and ceilings, etc., you need to level up. And you level up by buying art. And to buy art, you need money. And you get money when people or robots visit your gallery. It's like a cycle. The art selection available in the game is pretty wide and it's getting bigger by the day because new artworks, as well as old, get added every single day. There's only one problem and it's not the game's fault, it's a problem with society. The old artworks are there because they're in the public domain and the recent artworks are there because the artists choose to put them inside the game. So that means there's gonna be a hole for most of the 20th century. Except if a miracle happens, don't expect to see anything by Picasso in there, for example. And if you want to learn more about all this, I would actually advise you watch the film called Everything is a Remix by Kirby Ferguson, which is 
probably the best documentary movie I have seen in my entire life. It's great. You start the game at level 0, and the maximum level currently in the game is level 30. Every time you gain a level, you unlock new walls, ceilings, floors, furniture, etc. to build your galleries with. There are also exclusive assets that you cannot get by leveling up, but more on that later. The prices of artworks are fixed. The artworks all cost the same amount, and that amount depends on your level. When you start the game at level 0, every art piece costs, I don't remember, I think 100 cubes, and when you're fully leveled up at level 30, every piece of art costs 13,000 cubes. And yes, as you've probably already guessed by now, the in-game currency is called the cube, and it looks like a Rubik's cube but made of chrome. So let's start by talking about the art. You have to buy art to progress, and while you can technically buy rent random artworks, I think most people, myself included, would prefer to buy art that they like, especially considering that you are gonna wanna exhibit it in your galleries. So how do you find art that you like? Well, there are several methods. Method number one is the one that works best in my experience, especially if you're a beginner. It's simple, you go inside a gallery, you find art that you like, and you buy it. If you don't know where to go, a good place to start is the plaza. It's sort of hub in the game, and I'll talk about it in detail in a few moments. There's also a button in the menu that will teleport you to a random gallery. And I have visited a lot of galleries, some by recommendations and some at random, and I've never found a gallery where there wasn't at least one painting or a photograph that I liked. Method number two is Daisy. Daisy is to art what Gladys is to science. It's an artificial intelligence that functions very much as the heart of the game, and its main job is to suggest artworks based on what you have bought, looked at, and put in your wish list. The third method is to find a work that you like, and then click on the Find Similar button. It's kinda hit or miss, but it works decently. Method number four is to ask for recommendations in the chat. I'll be talking about the chat more in depth in a minute. There are other methods, but these are the most important. Let's go now to the architecture mechanics. The building inventory menu has many subdivisions. The most important are floors, walls, and ceiling. And basically, you start by putting floors on the floor, then you put walls, and then, well, You've played fucking Lego in your life, right? At least once. Well, if you've played Lego, then you know how to build. It works the same way. You gain new assets in your building inventory in two ways. The first one is by leveling up. And to level up, buy art. The second one is to buy assets in the plaza. Okay, so I gotta talk about the plaza. It's kind of a hub, but not exactly. It's the first place you spawn when you create a new character and you don't have a gallery yet. The most important aspect of the plaza are Peggy and Larry the dealers. They sell assets that you cannot get by leveling up. Their stock renews every 24 hours, and they are one of the reasons why people connect regularly to the game. Every day you're excited to see new assets and try them in your galleries. It also kinda acts as a showcase for new assets, I imagine that the devs are particularly proud of. Oh. And there are also a bunch of temporary exhibits. Some are partnerships, some are some kind of feature thing, and they're kinda all over the place in every sense of the phrase. LAST MINUTE EDIT! Oh, the devs just released a massive update this morning. As I was putting the finishing touches to this video, I just learned about it. And the plaza now looks completely different. I panicked a little bit when I saw this, but then I went around the place and there's Peggy, there's Larry, there are the temporary exhibits. It's just a massive cosmetic overhaul, but it works the exact same way as before. The new name is, um, okay, I'm gonna try to pronounce it. I cook at the meatball, wahoo! 
<clears throat> that's my best, uh, that's the best I could do. One little detail that I really appreciate, it's these uh, little triangle things uh, in between the tiling. They look like the transparency checks that you have in Photoshop or GIMP or uh, the, does anyone actually use Affinity? I, I don't know anyone who does, but that's a nice little detail here. But now let's talk about the chat. The chat is the principal way that you will interact with other players in the game, because this is an MMO, and lest we forget, we live in a society! So let's be social. The chat is organized in five subdivisions. The first one is called General. It's where you go to talk about anything to everyone. If you post in the general chat, everyone who is connected to the game at the moment will see it and be able to reply to you. The second section is gallery. If you're in a specific gallery and you see other people and you want to talk to them, that's why you use. Your messages will be seen by all the other persons that are in the same gallery as you are right now. The third one is called help and it's for, well, take a wild guess. The fourth one is called art. Did you see a painting that you thought was amazing and you think that everyone should see it? Then you can post a link to it in the art chat. Are you looking about something specific, like for example a painting of a horse? Ask in the art chat and some people will recommend art to you. It's basically like Google with extra steps. The fifth is called Friends of Daisy and uh, I have no idea what's going on in there. You might be the target audience for this channel if you use GitHub. If all this socialization is not enough for you, there's also a reasonably active Discord server and if you visit a gallery that you really like, you can leave compliments in the gallery's guest book. Oh, and you can also leave comments on artworks. Now before we move on, there's one last thing I want to say about the chat and player interaction in general in the game, and it's that it's not censored. You would think that something like this goes without saying, but in an era where every little corner on the internet is being censored and sanitized, this is very refreshing. You can go in the chat and say, fellas, I've just found a painting and it is fucking beautiful. You can say, oh man, I'm so glad I'm at home playing video games because the weather outside is shit. And that is such a blessing because this way we avoid the uncanny valley of speech. This game might be full of robots, but nobody talks like a robot and that is very refreshing. Oh, and while I very very much appreciate the fact that in this game you can talk just like you would in real life, I do not see it as a green light to go ahead and insult other players. I very much think you should not do that. Oh sure, based on the interactions that I've had with other players, I think that it's very likely that if you do so, you would stumble upon someone like me, who would shrug it off and maybe even find it funny. But I also imagine that some players might play the game because it is really chill and they just want to relax, and so you might just ruin their day. Oh, I can already hear the counter arguments. I know that some of you will say, well, if you're so sensitive, that being insulted in an online game could ruin your day, then don't play online games. And like, I understand the argument, it has some pros and cons, I'm not here to debate it. And sure, there are plenty of good games which are not online, nobody's gonna call you a moron in the middle of a game of Sonic and Knuckles. Now, if you just fired up the old Mega Drive and in the middle of a level, Sonic looks you dead in the eyes and starts saying mean, oddly specific things about your parents and shit, that's not cyberbullying, that's psychotic schizophrenia. What you have to do in this situation is to call an ambulance and tell them that they gotta... Tell them that they gotta... <clears throat> Tell them that they gotta go for but besides that point, one of the reasons I think the game is not censored is because it doesn't need to. Like, the players are always... I hate that word. Every time I use the word to talk about other people, it makes me feel like I'm talking about some lobotomized, spineless, care bear doormats. But the people in this game are nice. My apologies, 
but it's true. Despite the very bad connotations that this word has nowadays, people in this game are really nice to each other. I've never seen anyone like insult other players. I've spent time on this game almost every day for the past three months and I've never seen people getting angry at each other. Oh sure, I've seen people getting angry at bugs or being angry at their computer being slow or stuff like this, but I've never seen an actual argument between players. Everyone is really courteous and just, yeah, nice to each other. Because why wouldn't they be? There isn't any kind of competition in this game. You don't have any reason to be angry at each other. And also, uncensored does not mean that there is no moderation. One time there was this guy who came in the chat and kept spamming some bullshit. He got kicked out in like 10 minutes. There is moderation but it is the right amount and for the right reasons. Welcome to the middle of the video. If you're seeing this, it likely means that you've made it through the first half. That's nice. Congratulations and thank you, my friend. I think you deserve a little break. So before our journey begins again, enjoy this 30 second rat interlude. I hope you like that. Now back to the show. Now let's talk about the music. The music you've been hearing from the start is not from the game, it's music that I've made. The game music is comprised of a few tracks. Some are good, some are bad, some are just okay. But the problem with it is that it's a playlist. And given the nature of the game, it's kind of unavoidable that it would be a playlist and not specific tracks made to fit specific environments. But everyone who's ever worked retail knows exactly what I'm going to say, especially considering that the game music playlist is pretty short. So if you play for any significant amount of time, you're going to hear every track a lot. And that makes you feel exactly like working in a supermarket. I haven't exactly counted, but I'm pretty sure that the playlist is shorter than one hour. And also, it's randomized in a completely random way. Which means that sometimes you might hear the same track three times in a row. Just like in the Salt and Pepper Diner by John Mulaney. Even if you like the music, after a few hours of hearing it on loop, you are going to hate it. The audio in general is not very good, the sound effects are weird, some work, some are kind of eerie, like for example the steps when you walk have no reverb. That is very much the uncanny valley of footsteps. The sound effects kind of make me think that they were made by different people at different times and that these people did not see eye to eye on what should you do because some are brutal and in your face. Some are very subtle and almost nice. And also, some things do not make a sound, which is weird considering almost everything in the game makes a sound. So why do some things not make a sound? Usually, I turn the sound off and I let some Spotify playlist run in the background, which is not a great solution because of frame rate issues that I'm gonna talk about in a bit. But yeah, the sound design is pretty much the worst aspect of this game. Oh, and last minute! Edit! The developers just released a big update, literally this morning, and I've just heard about it as I am putting the finishing touches to this video. And now there's a new item in the game that allows you to link music from SoundCloud to play it in a specific area of a specific gallery. I have not had the occasion to really test it, but I've seen it in a few galleries and it 
kinda works. The problem with it is that you can only link one track at a time to a specific location. So if you stay in that location, the same one track will play on loop. But it's the step in the right direction. Things are evolving. Now let's talk about the graphics. They're nice. I would even go as far as to say that they are really nice. Clearly, this is the aspect of the game that the devs have focused on the most, and given the fact that the game is all about art and aesthetics, it's a very logical choice. The video settings give you a lot of options, which is surprising and awesome to see in an indie game, even if some of them seem to do nothing at all. The textures, for example, I tried changing the textures level many times, sometimes I did it in front of a wall, in front of art, in front of furniture, and it does jack shit like it really makes no difference. You know how sometimes in games you will see these placebo options meant to give you illusion of a choice but don't actually do anything? I think some of these options are like that. But the shadows, for example, if you change the level of shadows, it will do a dramatic difference in terms of visual quality as well as in terms of FPS. And since we're talking about the frame rate, here's what the store page has to say about the hardware that your PC needs in in order to run the game. Recommended processor quad core CPU. So I have a hexa core CPU, so technically 50% better, and I know that's not exactly how it works, but next, memory 16 gigabytes of RAM. I do have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Graphics, Nvidia GTX 1060. I do have a 1060. So basically, my current PC is better than the recommended system. And yet, even at 1080p resolution, I'm far from getting a constant 60 FPS. In an age where 4K screens are slowly becoming the norm, not getting 60 FPS at 1080p should not be what happens when you have a machine that is above the recommended hardware. At first I thought that the store page was kind of lying, and then I realized that it probably was the recommended configuration for the earliest release of that game in 2018 and since it's constantly being improved because it's in early access, the resources necessary are increasing, but they probably forgot to update the store page. Last minute edit! A few hours ago, while I was putting the finishing touches to this video, a big update of this game was released and I tried the game a little bit and the frame rate issues are worse. So this vindicates my hypothesis that the game is indeed getting better and better visually and so they probably forgot indeed to update the store page and you should probably take the recommended configuration configuration from the store page as a minimum. Of course you could get better FPS by dialing down the video quality, but in a game like this it's something that you really do not want to do. Playing this game on low settings would kinda defeat the purpose. Oh and by the way, since I'm talking about the update, galleries used to take a long time to load. For a small gallery it would be almost instantly, but for a medium sized gallery it would be about one minute and for a large gallery it would be at least three minutes. But since the update, all the galleries load much, much faster than before. There seems to be some kind of optimization going on, so I am optimistic about the future. Oh, let's talk about bugs and glitches while we are at it. This game contains a surprisingly low amount of bugs and glitches for an indie game. As a matter of fact, there is only one glitch that has been bugging me and it's not even really a glitch because it's the fault of the person who built the gallery. Sometimes there can be a visual glitch if the gallery is built wrong. So it's totally fixable by players by respecting the unwritten rules of building, which is maybe an issue, like there's not enough things that are explained in my opinion. Even if most is very easy to figure out on your own, it can take a little time and trial and error. So here's what it looks like. I call it the misalignment bug, but as I said, it's not really a bug because you can fix it if you build properly. It can happen if you put up a floor without a ceiling underneath, or if you rotate a column wrong, 
or if you put a balustrade backwards, stuff like this. I see this shit in almost every gallery I visit, which is starting to make me think that it's only me who's seeing it, like maybe it's a problem with my computer, because even in intricate galleries that are very well designed with a lot of attention to detail, you see this stuff a lot. So this really got me wondering, am I the only one seeing it? Is it not in everyone's computers? As, is, is it a problem with my computer specifically? I don't know, maybe it's just like anti-aliasing, like recently I learned that a lot of people turn anti-aliasing off in most games because they do not see the difference, which absolutely blew my fucking mind because for me anti-aliasing does a lot of difference. Something that I really appreciate and that I did not expect is that every art piece in the game is to scale. Your avatar is the height of an average human being and you can see that way the size and shape of all your favorite paintings that maybe you only saw on the internet or in books. Now you can really see what size they are. Recently I purchased The Great Wave of Kanagawa by Hokus and I was very surprised to see that it's the size of a fucking stamp. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's like the size of a postcard. For some reason, I always imagined it to be very large. So yeah, that's cool. Not only am I seeing cool art, but I'm also learning stuff about it. That's nice. Let's go back to performance. So the frame rate in game varies a lot because it's entirely dependent on what is around you. Like in my home gallery, for example. There are some parts of it where I'm always in the 50s and regularly hit 60. And in some other parts of the same gallery, I'm around 10 FPS. 15 at best. What makes the biggest difference in terms of performance is the amount and density of light fixtures that you install. And that's frustrating because in my opinion, lights are the most important item. They will change the look of your gallery, they will really change the mood, and they can be a very powerful tool to make your gallery look like what you want it to look like. I like using as much of them as I can, but that can really make your frame rate tank. Some would say that this is kind of nitpicky, and well, you would be right. Globally, the graphics are good, I really like them, and the game is very pleasant to look at. There is only one real problem. The lights go through the walls. Why? I'm not even sure if it's an intentional artistic decision, or if it's an engine limitation, or some kind of bug, or I, I don't know, but light goes through the walls, and that can be a problem. For example, I said earlier that putting a lot of lights will make your frame rate tank, but imagine that it's for a very specific room, so you put a lot of lights in one room because you want this specific room to have a specific mood, but even if you're outside that room and just near it, your frame rate will still tank. But the worst about it is reflections. For example, if you set up anything that's reflective, like glass walls, for example, inside a room, look at this. Look at the reflection on this glass wall. What is it? It's not coming from anywhere in the room. You know what's reflecting in that glass? Outdoor lights from outside the building. Several walls and floors and ceilings that separate this room from the outside. And the outside, even the sky is still reflecting on that glass if you put it in a closed room. That fucks me up. Skies, by the way, are a super powerful tool. They are the most important part of setting up the mood of your gallery. The skies will completely completely change the vibe. Because every light goes through the walls, changing the sky will change everything, outside as well as inside your gallery. There's a bunch of options. Some you get by leveling up, some you buy at the plaza. Some will be quite subtle, and some will change your gallery's look a lot. There are also effects that go on top of that, 
but they are few and far in between. I only have four. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any more of them. I haven't seen any different effects in any galleries I've visited. One is sunlight and he does not really seem to do anything. The other one is snow and I fucking hate snow. The other one is these flowers that fall from the sky, but all the flowers are in an aggressive shade of magenta and I cannot really condone magenta. And the fourth one is fireworks. I like this one. I like it a lot. Fireworks are so nice. And that concludes our review. I've said everything important, I think. So is the game good or bad? Well, mixed bag, but mostly good. Despite its many problems, the game is very enjoyable. Not only because of the game itself, but also because of all the interactions with the community. I give it a rating of Basil Smash. It's very modern, despite using old ingredients. It's a bit of a hipster thing, but it's underrated. I think one of these game's strongest suits is that it can basically appeal to anyone, whether you're a hardcore gamer or very casual, and I guess you could say the same thing about Candy Crush, but so what? I like Candy Crush. So will I do a follow-up episode when this game gets out of early access? Maybe. In the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. If you really liked, don't forget to subscribe. And if you really, really like, I have a Patreon. Link should be in the video description, but I'll also flash it during credits. And stay tuned, because next episode is about an old game where you shoot aliens.